and so that children who at the age of eight watch more television are also more likely to act aggressively when they are uh, adolescents. Even when you control for social status, income of the parents, ethnic group, etc. In these studies it has been shown that adults as well as children are influenced by violent television and there are meta-analyses. The latest meta-analysis was published by Craig Anderson in the Psychological Bulletin. They looked at 380 samples with more than 130,000 participants on aggressive affect, aggressive cognition, pro-social behavior and empathy and the overall effect of violent media game exposure. So the extent to which children um, and adults are exposed to violent games and aggressive behavior was studied in 140 samples. So we really have a lot of research going on in this field. 140 different samples, more than 68,000 research participants and the average effect was 0.19. So it was not a really strong effect but it is a, it is a substantial effect. The average meta-analytic effect between smoking and lung cancer is about 0.3035 and no one would deny it that there is a link, that there is a relationship between smoking and lung cancer. Not every smoker dies or experiences lung cancer. Not every person who experiences lung cancer was a smoker before but there is this relationship and in our societies we know that there is this relationship and therefore politicians <coughs> put in legal acts in, 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 in place that don't allow the tobacco industry to advertise to uh, young adults. Uh, this means that Cigarettes can also be bought by, bought by people over 18, etc., etc. And the uh, people who use this, researchers often use this as evidence to also say that we should put a ban on extremely violent games because it can make people more aggressive and there is research evidence for it. But there's also a debate about this. People like Ferguson and Kilbourne challenge people like Huseman, Bushman or uh, Anderson. Those of you who are interested in it, in 2010 there was a special issue of the Psychological Bulletin, one of the major journals in, in the uh, whole of psychology and Ferguson and Kilbourne uh, come forward with some argument why we should not um, over-exaggerate or uh, overestimate this effect uh, and then Huseman and Bushman came up with uh, explanations for why it is indeed important to uh, take this seriously. Yes, please. I, mean, I was just wondering if, they, if this experiment actually take into consideration or control at least for uh, the aggressivity level of the participants before they actually expose them to these kind of games because theoretically yeah. one can argue that the people who are interested in this kind of game are also the kind of people that anyway are already more aggressive. Yeah. Thank you very much. So the question is, uh, is it taken into account whether the people who play these green games are more effective in the first place? So can we interpret this as cause and effect? Is playing more violent games causing aggression or does more aggressive traits lead those children or people play those games more uh, often? Uh, we cannot infer this from this average correlation, but we can infer this from a number of studies within these 140 samples that have taken an experimental approach and randomly assigned people to the violent or non-violent game condition and then looked at the effect. I, I think what we need to do and what these researchers in the area of aggression and media uh, have done is we need to combine three different approaches. We need to combine uh, laboratory studies that manipulate media consumption in the laboratory and then looks at the short-term effects like the one I've shown you with uh, Berkowitz and Lepage for example. This can give us an idea about cause and effect. Is it really causing people to be a little bit more aggressive for at, little, uh, at least a short term if they are exposed to violent content in some way? 
But this is obviously not enough. We also need to know from cross-sectional survey studies, is there this link between aggression and, and media in the wider population? And here, if you ask in surveys, for example, you can also ask about aggressive acts like really punishing people, hurting people, etc. Et and we know that there is this relationship. And we need to combine this, and this was done by Huseman, as I said, with longitudinal studies, where we also control for people's background. Because background does obviously have an influence. People from lower social classes typically also consume more of this media content. But once we control for it, we can still see how does it develop in all societal strata. Yeah, but yeah. I think if you're only controlling using a, a question there, I mean, what is the likelihood that somebody who actually, I don't know, beat up their children actually going to say, yes, I will beat up my children. I mean, is this, they're going to obviously say no. no yeah. You no. cannot control if people are lying or not, especially with this yeah. kind of questions. No, no, not only questionnaires. Huseman, for example, has also looked over time, uh, for example, at the rates of convictions. How often were people convicted because of aggressive acts, for example? Obviously, we need all of this research. You cannot do the ideal study that looks at all of these factors. Either you do a short-term um, laboratory study or a wide study that tries to get a representative sample, or you do these longitudinal studies, or you do studies that go into prisons, and you ask prison inmates how much violent media content did you watch as a child, which obviously is also uh, um, um, problematic. Um, yeah. But in combination, 140 studies that all show more or less the same effects, and on average an effect that is significant and substantial, I think is evidence that we should carefully think about how much media violence we ourselves would consummate and how much do we our children to allow to play. I think um, the problem also is maybe that there is, of course, great variation in the extent to which some people consummate media of what level of violence. And uh, playing a little bit, you know the, the Spiegel article, uh, Spiegel title story from this week was uh, computer games are good? I haven't read it so far, but I also know that playing computer games can also have some positive effects because it can uh, help people developing speed. And when we do intelligence tests that also have speed components, people may actually gain some uh, intelligence points by playing video games before that have speed components. Um, so it's not all bad. And maybe also a little bit of aggression would not do any lasting harm. But if we imagine that some students or some very young children sit in front of their computers six, seven, eight hours a day and watch or play extremely violent games, then we would have a problem. And this is probably underestimated the number of effects that this extremely or um, yeah, extreme consummation of violent games has. Um, it, does have, it has been shown in research that the repeated exposure to horrifying events has a numbing effect on our sensitivity to those effects. Adults, ad adolescents and adults who watch more than four hours of television per day are more likely than people who watch less television to have an exaggerated view of the level of violence that occurs outside their home and they have a greater fear of being personally assaulted I think there is an estimation in Germany, but, but the, the, the figures are at least 10 years old. Uh, on every single day when you watch television for 12 hours, you would observe something like 13,000 murders. So people who constantly watch television think that evil is everywhere. And when I just step outside of my, my uh, door, then there's a great likelihood that I will be killed or personally assaulted. At least five reasons to media violence help explain why exposure to violence in the media might increase aggression. If they can do it, so can I. Okay, when everyone is aggressive and when we see aggression in the media all the time, why should I not be aggressive? Oh, that's it, how you do it. 
so people learn and imitate the aggressive acts, um, I think it must be aggressive feelings that I'm experiencing. Huh, another brutal beating, what's on the other channel, so it's this numbing effect, or I had better get him before he gets me. So we overestimate the likelihood that someone wants to do something nasty to us, and then we retaliate in advance, so to say. How can we now reduce aggression? Let me spend the final 10 minutes or so on some ideas what works and what might less work uh, on punishing aggression. For children, harsh punishment provides a model of aggression and does not prevent a child from engaging in the forbidden behavior when the child is unsupervised. So when an adult uh, uh, puts a threat to the child of harsh punishment, what does it mean for the child? It means first that aggression is okay because when my father can beat me, then beating someone seems to be tolerated, at least in some situations. Uh, and it also tells the child, okay, as long as my father is around, I should probably do what he expects me to do, but as long as I'm uh, on my own in school or uh, in my leisure time, then I can beat people because my father also does it. The threat of mild punishment, swiftly administered, however, does seem to reduce aggression. Mild punishment when it is swiftly administered, helps reducing aggression. This has been shown in research. And particularly the combination of educating people and my punishment has been successful to reduce the occurrence of bullying behavior in schools. For adults, uh, yeah, sorry. No, no. Um, my punishment here means that um, we obviously, as teachers, as, uh, as nursery school teachers, as uh, parents, should not beat our children. But we can use mild punishment, that is, confine them to their seat for a couple of minutes, or send them to their room, or something like this. And if we do that, together with educating them about what does it do to the other person if you hurt them, uh, to educate them about de de experiencing some empathy, then this helps reducing bullying behavior at school. Okay. But no, I come to the other point in a moment. So for children, this seems to help. Mild punishment swiftly administered. For adults, the research evidence is mixed. There are some laboratory experiments that suggest that under ideal circumstances, punishment can indeed reduce aggression. However, we don't live in an ideal world. And if you look into any case of strong physical violence in the streets, how long it takes from the, um, the person committing the crime to actually sit in court, get his uh, uh, um, punishment, and then has to go to prison or whatever, it takes sometimes years. And it's not only not swiftly administered, it also is contingent on a number of factors. So not for every deed, the sentence is the exact same. So people don't know, often don't know what to expect. So it's neither consistent nor contingent. Berkowitz uh, suggested that it is both the swiftness and the certainty of punishment rather than severity. So the death penalty does not help. It's more important to be certain of what is to be expected and it needs to be swiftly administered. It's not so much uh, the strength or the severity of the punishment uh, that leads to uh, reductions in aggression. Um, some ten years ago, Uli Wagner and I wrote a brief uh, article in the Politik and Zeitgeschichte. Uh, at that time, there was um, some media discussion about uh, excesses of school violence. And we thought we should make some statement uh, uh, about this. And we said, at that time, we don't have evidence that there's really more school violence than in previous times. 
every generation seems to think that the previous, the, the following generation is more violent or more stupid or whatever, uh, less active, less knowledgeable. But this is not true. And in quantitative terms, at least in 2000, there was not much evidence that suggested that there is indeed more violence in schools. But what we did observe was that there is qualitative differences. There is stronger violence, that, there's, that there are more accounts of extreme violent acts. And we said uh, in this paper that it's really important for schools not to tolerate any physical violence, but it's important to be, as teachers and head teachers of schools, to be consistent and contingent. Every student has to be certain of a certain punishment, such as being confined in a room uh, next to the headmaster for two hours or being taken away the mobile phone for the re reminder of the week or whatever. It has to be certain, contingent upon the deed, and it needs to be swiftly administered. As soon as a teacher observes something, the teacher needs to do something. And not only at the end of the school day or week or when the, uh, when the reports are uh, sent out. So to your question, this is a bit of a question of catharsis and uh, aggression. There is this common belief that one can blow off steam and get it out of the system, which is a little bit an oversimplification of Freud's psychoanalytic notion of catharsis. And according to this idea, performing an aggressive act relieves built up aggressive energies and therefore reduces the likelihood of further aggressive behavior. However, there are not many, but there are some controlled laboratory experiments that suggest that attempting to reduce one's anger by acting violently increases rather than decreases subsequent aggression and hostility. So when people are allowed to express their aggression, they later feel greater dislike and hostility toward their victims. So it does not seem that there's evidence on catharsis both for uh, measures of subsequent aggression and for the attitude towards the victims. So catharsis has not been confirmed in the studies that we have available. There are not so many, as I said, but the, the studies that are available consistently show we don't have any evidence for catharsis effect. Rather, the opposite is true. Yes, please. This is something I would like you to discuss in the MOOC. Uh, the question for this week is, do you think that practicing martial arts reduces aggressive behavior or makes people more likely to be aggressive in everyday situations? Uh, I would really like you to discuss it and, and uh, provide you with your examples or your theories or your ideas. And then I will talk a little bit about this at the beginning of next week. Thank you very much. Dankeschön.